Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going up to the International Space Station where Mary Hall has shared yet another exceptional video with me of what appears to be several objects parked in the sky, or at least high in the atmosphere above planet Earth. We're starting off with a photo shared with me by Tommy P. out of St. James, Missouri. He's taken up astrophotography and is doing a fine job. You're looking at the Orion Nebula, obviously, in the Orion Constellation. And what this kind of reminded me of, just real quick, back in 2012, when I was trying to explain to everybody what I was seeing in the eastern sky, in the constellation or near the constellation of Hydra, between Hydra and Leo, looked exactly like this. Obviously, this is much closer. What I was seeing was very, very far away, about the size of that star right there, but it was a jagged red cloud, and it would switch from a jagged red cloud, like you see here, this is a nebula, to a blue nebula, like that, about that size, way off in the distance, in the sky between Hydra and Leo. But this here is the Orion Nebula. Beautiful photo by Tommy out of St. James, Missouri. Great job, guys. Keep the photos coming. Since we're here at the website, we're going to take a look at the Schumann Resonance. You can see some heavy-duty activity in the Schumann Resonance. And that can be traced back to the sun, where right now there's no sunspots or necessarily large active regions facing planet Earth. That is from a stream of high-speed solar wind that came out of a once-Earth-facing coronal hole. You can see now that the energy has passed the Earth and everything's going back to normal. But right now, the Earth-facing side of the sun is actually very quiet. There's not even any active regions on the Earth-facing side. Hopping over to the Yellowstone supervolcano Caldera. A little bit of activity once again today. The seismo here over in the very busy northwest quadrant has no activity, which is kind of rare. More than likely, mechanical issues got some activity once again. We're starting to see consecutive action on the seismos in the northeast quadrant. Also showing an earthquake over here at Parker Peak. Didn't last very long, but got some earthquake activity there. Lake Butte and a couple of other seismos across the Yellowstone supervolcano caldera. And more than likely, those are localized events. But other than that, this is a normal day, the new norm at the supervolcano caldera. And I would expect a little bit of activity at the supervolcano caldera. After all, it's a supervolcano. Also, I want to share a photo that was shared with me here a couple of days ago of this unusual looking configuration. This is actually out in the ocean. And I wanted to tell you guys what this is in case you happen to run across it in the future. I went to the location. Actually, they shared the exact location with me. And it's off the coast of New Brunswick, right in here. And if you look around, there are many of these types of configurations. And these, I measured them. They're 100 feet wide. I've researched these before. I knew what they were when I saw them. What these are are fish farms. This is known as aquaculture. We have agriculture, which is on land where we farm produce. This is aquaculture where they literally have these things loaded with salmon. And if you look around this area, you can see some more over here, over here, over here. Here's a very obvious collection of them right there. See them? Those are fish farms. And if you happen to run across these at other places around the earth, more than likely, those are fish farms. And if I had to guess, I would say that all of these big 100-foot circular containers are holding salmon, Atlantic salmon. Now I'm going to take you guys up to the International Space Station. Here's the video that Mary Hall shared with me. Make sure to check out her YouTube channel. You can find link below in the description box. Mary keeps a close eye on a lot of things. One of those things is the International Space Station. I'm going to play the original video that she shared with me, and then we're going to zoom in and take a much closer look. This is in the South Atlantic, by the way. And before we continue any further, you're going to see what looks like a fleet of objects. I don't know what they are. She doesn't either. She had never seen anything like this, and she has hours upon hours upon hours of viewing experience with this ISS live cam. She really does. 
I went over to flightradar24.com and it keeps track of all of the air traffic around the world, literally, even including balloons. And there's a fleet of balloons that roam the Earth. Typically, they stay close to the equator. More than likely, you can usually find them somewhere above South America or Africa. Right now, the fleet is primarily over Africa. In fact, they've been there for quite a while. The South Atlantic is down in here. And that's where you're going to see this footage from. It's above the ocean, not land. So these objects are not part of the large balloon collection that does roam the Earth. There's two of them right there. We're going to zoom in much closer, and you're going to see several of them over here kind of tucked away in the clouds, and they're even influencing the clouds like they're moving around. Check this out. This is an excellent observation, and like she's pointing, got arrows going to this area here. There's a bunch, and even kind of disturbing the clouds as they appear to possibly be moving. So what I did was I took and I zoomed in on the video that Mary shared with me and tried to take a closer look at this fleet of objects. Here's the first two. And again, this is above water. This is not above land. There's two objects there. They're moving, so I wouldn't think moving that quickly. And of course, the space station is moving too. So with both of them moving, it's difficult to tell how fast they could potentially be moving. But I don't think they're balloons. I don't think those types of balloons anyway would be visible from 250 miles above the Earth. Otherwise, we would see them all the time because the balloons have been up for years and to see something like this for a first time, especially an experienced viewer, I have to say it's kind of a mystery. I don't know what these things are. Here's the, the fleet. There's a couple of them over here, a couple of stray ones over here off to the right. And then I'm going to go back to the larger fleet of these objects that you can definitely tell are influencing the clouds right here. Look at those things. I counted and there's 15 in this very wide area, some of them brighter than others. And what I think would cause possibly some of them to be brighter than others would be their altitude. If they're up higher, they're receiving more sunlight. The lower they are, the less sunlight they're receiving, like these here. And these are enhanced, by the way. They're not altered in any way. I never alter any of the photos or videos you guys send in. I will enhance, though, looking for unique features. Obviously, this one's in a different format. Light is dark and dark dark is light and you can clearly see there is a fleet of something parked above planet earth visible from the international space station and as i looked at flight radar 24 the balloons that i do follow on flight radar are not in this location in fact there's not too much of anything out there but water this is in the south atlantic ocean so once again, another great observation by Mary Hall. So make sure you stop by and check out her channel. Subscribe. You can find it linked below in the description box. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. All of the photos end up here at the Sky Phenomena Photo Gallery at the website. And sometimes I'll use them in a video just like you saw right here. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.